Hello and welcome back to Stop and Go F1 for this testing roundup for day number two. Here we are. If you've missed testing roundup for day number one, that's available on the channel as well as the preview. But here we are for day number two. And you know what? It's been a very interesting one. I don't think there's been any team today that truly had a bad test. Not like yesterday when Williams were in a bad position. But um, there's been some that had much better tests than others. And we'll get into all of that right now. Firstly, make sure you like and subscribe. That is the rules. Uh, but also today, the, uh, the day was kind of disrupted a little bit. With an hour to go in the morning session... The Ferrari ran over a drain, which was hidden within a curb, and the drain lifted up and damaged the floor. Due to this, they had to take a look at the curb and, and the drain and try and fix it, so they red flagged the session with an hour to go. Because of that, they extended the afternoon session by an hour, putting an hour at the start of uh, the session. So it was a bit shook up a little bit this morning. So the drivers who were on the morning session have considerably less laps than the drivers who were on the afternoon sessions. And when I go through all this, if you're wondering why certain drivers like a Fernando Alonso or whoever has a very low amount of laps, that is as for why. And we'll get more into the situation with Ferrari and that uh, drain as we go on. But let's start going in reverse Constructors' Championship order, meaning we start with Haas. So Nico Hülkenberg was out there this morning, and honestly, he didn't really get up to much. He got some good laps in. Uh, Timing-wise, wasn't great, but of course, lap times don't matter in testing, of course. Magnussen uh, took over in the afternoon, and his big highlight of the afternoon was he got an overtake on Charles Leclerc which might be the only time that happens all year for anyone in the Haas. So that was good for both of them there. Uh, Holgenberg finished the morning session in 9th, uh, which turned into 16th out of the 17 drivers who ran today. He got 31 laps in. Magnussen uh, ended up 15th with 93 laps. Overall, that's 124 laps, which puts them 6th in the constructors in terms of the amount of laps. Which, you know, yet again for Haas, some good running, a good amount of laps there, showing no pace whatsoever, which might be because they have no pace whatsoever. But reliability is very good for them. And it looks like maybe that tyre wear issue has kind of cleaned up itself a bit as well. So, good for them. Uh, across to Stake now. Stake F1 team kicks Sauber. Uh, Joe was in the morning. And you know what? I'm actually very surprised by this car because it looks quite good. I wouldn't say it's especially fast, but I think it's the fastest of the back markers. So I put in like the same group, Williams, Haas, and Stake F1 Team Pick Sauber. And as of right now, I'd say Stake, uh, Stake F1 Team Pick Sauber, of course, are the fastest and most reliable of that group. At uh, Joe Gunham this morning, the car just looks really quite solid. It looks much improved on the car from last year. Not too sure about the pace of it, but uh, very much under control through uh, both sessions. Looking good. Bottas takes over in the afternoon, which means it's special helmet street time, guys. This has come out over three days now, but finally, we have... Valtteri Bottas's helmet here, and we know this is very important to us here because Valtteri Bottas won the award for King of Special Helmet Street uh, last year. So he knew he was going to come out the gates with something good here, and he has delivered. So it's a Northern Lights inspired helmet design, black and green to match uh, the Stake F1 Team Kick Sauber car. Overall, Great stuff from Valtteri Bottas there, setting us up wonderfully for another, hopefully, great year of special helmets from him. So he took over for the afternoon session, and the car was uh, bouncing a lot, but it wasn't scraping. Now, a lot of the cars today 
have been bouncing and then the floor hitting the uh, track and there's sparks flying everywhere. You hear the scraping noise. We'll get into it a bit later on, but the McLaren suffers this quite a bit. The stake bounces a lot but doesn't scrape a lot, which makes me think their ride height is a quite considerably higher than some of the other cars, which would make the car itself slower. So it might be by design to kind of sandbag and hide a bit of pace, or it might be because if they lower it, they're really going to suffer. We're not too sure on that one there, but they are riding it quite a bit higher. But what, yet again, apart from that bouncing, the car itself drives particularly well. Um, Joe finished the morning in 7th, that turned into 13th whilst everyone had run. Um, I'll say it again, I said it yesterday, um, the reason why I mentioned them both is just because the afternoon session is a more optimum time for lap times, not the lap time matters of course, because there will be more grip on the track and the temperatures are better. So um, I'm mentioning both just to have a bit more context around that there. Joe had 38 laps in total, uh, Valtteri Bottas finished 9th, with 97 laps, 97 laps being the most of anyone who just ran in one of the two sessions. So Stake F1 Team Nick Sauber finished with 135 laps overall, which is second on the day. So another very good testing day for Stake F1 Team Kick Sauber. Moving across to the racing bills, and we start with Yuki Tsunoda in the morning, who is doing some long runs, so got some good laps in there, complaining of strong wind. Now, the wind was particularly strong uh, today. Lots of cars suffering from that, but it seemed like as much as Yuki was complaining about it, the car reacted to the wind quite well. There were lots of other cars that we'll get into later that really suffered from this high wind. So I think the car did well there. Ricardo came in in the afternoon, started the afternoon also doing some long runs there, but made a change to the C4s, which is the second softest tyres uh, we have um, available in the testing sessions. So he goes out on the C4s, and the time he did wasn't altogether that impressive, which I don't think is representative of how fast these guys can actually go, because they were quite a bit off um, Carlos Sainz, who was also on the C4s. I think they were like... 1.1 second off sites. I do not think this car is 1.1 second off the Ferrari. So it might be fuel load, might be engine mode. We aren't too sure on that one. But I don't think that's truly representative of the racing bill's pace. Uh, Yugi Snowder, at the end of the day, uh, he was 10th in the morning session out of the 10 drivers. And at the end of the day, out of the 17 drivers who set lap times, he was 17th, but yet again, he was doing long runs, so not really representative there at all. Uh, 40 laps for him. Ricardo finished the day 5th. He was 1.4 seconds off uh, Carlos Sainz's lap, also on the C4 tyres. So, again, I don't think that's representative. He did 88 laps, so 128 laps today for the racing bills, which puts them 4th. So, overall, another pretty good day for the racing bills. But you know who didn't have a good day yesterday was Williams. They had a disaster of a day uh, yesterday. Today, uh, Logan Sargent in the car all day. He went out very early on the C4 tyres and set a time that was eight tenths of a second off the back of Charles Leclerc, who was the fastest at the time, on the C3. So again, either that's not representative or they're very slow. I don't really know why they would go out so early on those tyres, especially considering Logan Sargent's in that car all day. Also, the car looking very unsteady. There was a big sideways moment at one point for Sargent. Uh, lots of... Um, uh, well, I've forgotten all the words. Lots of lockups, lots of wide moments. Yeah, just didn't look great and then at the end of the day they had another issue which kept Logan Sargent in the garage uh, towards the end of the afternoon session. Uh, Sargent finishes the day 11th in the timing screens and they put in 117 laps so quite a few more laps than they did yesterday but they are still making up for lost time and they lost even more time today. They were 8th overall for the constructors. 
across to Alpine now. Uh, Pierre Gasly had the morning session. Quite a bit of understeer for him in the morning session, but overall looking okay. Ocon took over for the afternoon session, and it seems like uh, Gasly's got a much better understanding of this car than Ocon does. We saw him yesterday go wide into the gravel. Today, he had a huge lockup, the biggest lockup of testing so far, and nearly ended up in the gravel again and that he that was what he was going on a fast run he also did a lot of long runs today uh, Gasly finished the morning in 8th which turned into 14th 33 laps for him uh, Ocon was 8th overall with 77 laps which gave them 111 laps overall which was the ninth most of the constructors yes again you know 111 laps is not bad uh, even though it is ninth. It's still a respectable amount of laps to go there. So the Alpine's a very strange one at the minute because I have no idea of their real pace and it seems like a handful. So it does not look like a great car as we sit here right now. Uh, across to Aston though, which does look like a good car. I'm very much impressed by Aston. I think tomorrow on the uh, on the roundup video, I'll do a top 10 of my order I think the cars are in. Uh, for the end of tomorrow's video. So yeah, Alonso was in the car in the morning session. It took them an hour and seven minutes to set a first lap time. So an hour and seven minutes there of testing wasted. Then Alonso loses another hour due to the red flag. So of the four hours they had, he only was really available for what? Like an hour and 50 minutes? So Alonso, who's been complaining that they don't have enough testing time, lost a lot of testing time today. The car itself seemed a little bit twitchier than it did yesterday, but still overall pretty good. Uh, Lance Stroll came in in the afternoon. And there's an interesting bit of uh, just force going on in the Aston camp. Now Pedro de la Rosa is part of the Aston camp. And he currently has the lap record for the Bahrain uh, circuit. So the lap record isn't a, rec a lap that is set in qualifying. It has to take place in the race to count towards the lap record. Pedro de la Rosa set that lap record in 2005. And through everything, it still stood. So like every stupidly fast car that's come over the last 20 years, none of them have ever beaten Pedro de la Rosa. But apparently he and many others are thinking that this year that record will go, which would be quite the statement to make. And, you know, it either means one of two things. Either Aston think Red Bull are really fast and will break the record, or Aston have looked at their own simulations and seen that they will win the record. Either way... This is a big statement coming from Aston on the potential speed that these cars could have when we see them in race mode on Saturday next week, not Sunday. So Stroll in the car, looking a lot more comfortable today than he was yesterday, set some good lap times overall, and the Aston continue to have a very good test. Uh, Alonso was 5th in the morning, which turned to 12th. 31 laps for him. Stroll uh, was 7th with 96 laps, which gave them 127 laps overall, which was good enough for 5th, right down the middle. Across to McLaren now, and Piastri was in in the morning. Uh, 47 minutes it took for them to set a time this morning. And McLaren continued to have this thing, very much like the Ferrari of the last few years, where it's scrappy, but it's fast. They are fighting the car at all times, but when they cross the line, it's a good time. Um, there was a shot of the engineers, the McLaren engineers, at one point, where they all looked incredibly happy. So a good sign to uh, the McLaren fans there that this could be a good one. Uh, Lando Norris took over in the afternoon, started by doing some long runs, much like everyone else was. Now, as I said before, the wind really picked up, and Yuki and the racing bills seemed to cope with it quite well. The McLaren, less so, was really quite unsettled by the wind, especially going into turn 14. A lot of big wide moments there for the McLaren. Um, and like I said, it was a handful of a car, but very quick. Then, at the end of the day, they had an issue, and that ended their testing prematurely for the afternoon session. 
Piastri was second in the morning, that turned to 10th, 35 laps for him. Lando Norris finished the day in 4th with 52 laps. Like I said, uh, their session was cut early, but the uh, engineers didn't seem to be too panicked or unsettled or unhappy by it. It definitely wasn't a planned thing they were doing, but it didn't seem to be that big of an issue. Um, they only had 87 laps today as a team, which put them last in the uh, constructors' charts of laps done today. Uh, so, yeah, they'll be looking to have a few more laps out there on the final day of testing tomorrow. But, all things considered, still looking relatively good for the McLaren team. But you know who it's looking really good for? Ferrari. Uh, Charles Leclerc out in the morning, and the car was bouncing a lot. There was a quite a few wide moments, but overall, good lap times for Charles Leclerc. Not the lap times matter, of course. Then, there's the thing with the drain, where uh, the drain popped open, or shot open, whatever it did, and it had given the Ferrari some floor damage, but they were able to fix that. Uh, Ferrari gave Charles Leclerc 30 minutes uh, at the start of the afternoon session to kind of make up for lost time, and despite uh, repairing the floor, the Ferrari were first out on the afternoon session and let Charles get on with his time there, which is good for him. Uh, then Sainz took over, uh, he went out on the C3 tyres and had a fantastic lap, very close to the Max Verstappen lap time. I think only like within a tenth, maybe even less than Max's lap time from yesterday. Then Charles put, sorry not Charles, uh, Carlos put the C4 on and the car looked absolutely fantastic on the C4 tyres. Uh, sets a lap time of 130.686, which is the fastest of testing thus far. Uh, one second faster than the fastest day two time of testing last year, and um, 0 0.3 off of the fastest lap time of all of testing last year. Then he goes out again, and there's a new lap time of one uh, point. Sorry, 1 minute, 29 seconds, 0 0.921, which is faster than the time that Sainz did in Q3 of the Bahrain GP last year. Now, of course, the tyres are different. Maybe track temperature is different as well. These are faster tyres, but it's a very good indication that these cars are going to be much faster than they, are, they were last year. Like the McLaren, though, lots of lockups on this one, um, lots of bouncing. Ferrari in particular, you could tell they were running the car very, very low. Lots of sparks coming off the back of the Ferrari. But overall, a fantastic day for them. Leclerc ended the morning session in first, which turned into sixth. 54 laps for him. Sainz ends the day on top in first with 84 laps, giving them a total of 138 laps today, which is the most of any team. A fantastic day for Ferrari, who have really shown that maybe they could be contenders this year. Maybe, maybe not. We don't really know. I think that Max Verstappen and the Red Bull, obviously we didn't see Max today, but I think that they're on an upper echelon here. But maybe Ferrari have closed that gap a little bit. I put Ferrari second as we sit here right now in terms of constructors. Uh, let's go to the team that finished second in the constructors last year, which is uh, Mercedes. Lewis Hamilton has released an image of his helmet this year, so we can do a special helmet street right here, right now. Here is Lewis's one. I like this. A mix of the design of the purple and the yellow. I know Lewis fans love the purple helmet, so a little bit of that back here uh, for this year. Carbon fibre around the top as well. Looks very nice. And also uh, the rainbow lines around the middle section and the stars. Really, really quite nice. It's you know, it's a mix of a lot of different elements from different helmets over the years. So, a nice helmet this year for Lewis uh, for his final Mercedes helmet. Fantastic stuff. Um, yeah, so the car, though, didn't start great. So, it was very twitchy, going very wide. And at this point, his lap times were about two seconds off of the lap times Leclerc was doing. Not the lap times matter, of course. But, you know, Lewis was going two seconds slower than Charles Leclerc was and still looked unstable, which is not a good sign. Um, they did improve throughout the day. 
Lewis also hit the drain that popped up, but apparently the Mercedes was okay. They checked over it, didn't take the floor off or anything, and it seemed to be fine. Um, then went to um, set some decent times. It seemed like, though, whenever the Mercedes got on the curbs, they lost a lot of balance. Um, and they went on the curbs quite a bit because they had a lot of oversteer. And in general, everyone was abusing track limits because you're allowed to abuse track limits in testing. But it seemed like the Mercedes would often be over the lines a lot. So another very unstable car here for Mercedes. I don't think they're in the same group, though, as a Ferrari or a McLaren because I don't think they're as fast as them. I don't know where I put. I don't know where I'm going to put them yet, though. But it doesn't seem like a great car for Mercedes. But it does seem that every second that they're on the track, they're getting a better understanding of it. And it's becoming more and more stable. So I have to see where they are this time tomorrow to see um, where I could possibly put them. But I don't put them in like second or third as of right now, which is quite interesting because a lot of the media seem to be which I don't know is if they're seeing something different than I am, or maybe it's still a bit of a hangover of these guys used to be good, so surely they should be up in that picture. I don't know which one it would be. But Lewis Hamilton, uh, third on the timesheet today, 123 laps, which put them seventh overall. So an all right day for Mercedes heading into the final testing day. And Red Bull now. Sergio Perez was in the car all day. It was supposed to be Sergio in the morning, Max in the afternoon. Then that would have been the end of Max Verstappen's testing uh, before we even get into the third day. Uh, but after the whole drain issue and the red flag, they elected to have Sergio in the car all day to make up as much time as he possibly could. They were the first out in the morning. And you know what? The Red Bull, it's not indestructible. A few issues for Red Bull today. Firstly, a brake issue at the start of the day where a small fire broke out within the brake disc. Uh, that was uh, soon fixed for them, though. Uh, uh, Checo seemed to be struggling quite a bit in the early morning, much like how Max was struggling in the morning as well. This seems to be a car that you don't, you don't just get into and it's fine. You have to get into it, get used to it, and then go from there. It was very twitchy on the curbs, a few lockups for Checo as well. Uh, going into the afternoon, Sergio got a load of laps in. Uh, at one point, quite a long section of testing, it was just him on the track. No one else, just the Red Bull going round and round and round. Then he had quite a big issue. Uh, I don't know exactly what it is. I'm not sure if they've said what it is yet. It looked, sounded like an engine issue from as soon as he went out the pits. Now, as he's going into sector three, the car seemed to pretty much shut down on uh, coast mode, and he has coasted very, very slowly back to the pits. So a big issue for Red Bull there. They did get Sergio back out, though, and he was the first to get to 100 laps. They were the first team to get to 100 laps for the second day in a row. At the end of the day, Sergio was second place overall, 128 laps, which put them third of all the constructors. So a mixed day for them. When the car was going well, it was going very well. But it is not a bulletproof car. They have got issues here, which they will be looking to address. So there you go. There is the roundup of testing day two. Join me again here tomorrow for the roundup of the final day. My goodness, hasn't that gone quick? And tomorrow I'll give my... Uh, worst to best of the team so I think they're going to be uh, laying the land this year and then we will have the news video Saturday and there will be my proper predictions video either Sunday or Monday we'll see how it goes but a lot of content's coming up on the channel then of course we'll have all the coverage of the actual Bahrain Grand Prix when that happens next weekend so a lot to look forward to make sure you subscribe for all of that until tomorrow though have a good one I'll see you then Goodbye.